Hello and welcome. Thank you for attending this talk, Drowning in APIs, How to Improve Your API Security with Proper Inventory, Prioritization, and Automation. So who am I? A bit about myself. My name is Doug Rogan. I am a senior security consultant in the threat management practice here at Optiv. I've been performing penetration testing for over 10 years, eight of those with Optiv. Like many of our application security team, I was a former developer who joined the dark side. If this were an in-person conference, you'd probably find me in the villages, primarily the lockpick village. As for this talk, we're gonna cover a little background on the exponential growth that the industry has seen when it comes to APIs, a little bit of the drivers and reasons for those that change. Then we'll take a look at how your organization can begin to handle that growth. We'll look at some management strategies to ensure that your organization has an understanding of their environment and how data is moving through it. Then we'll discuss some strategies for securing all those endpoints and the data that's moving through them. And finally, I'll introduce how to gain some testing efficiency through Postman using test scripts and monitors. Three factors have contributed to the growth of APIs. User behavior has shifted from using a single device such as a PC to multiple devices, cell phones, tablets, PCs, et cetera. And, and applications have had to shift along with that to support multiple platform experiences. APIs enable this by reducing the overhead that developers have to develop for those multiple platforms. Application architectures have shifted from large all-encompassing platforms to microservices, providing specialized content. The move from on-premise to cloud has made standing up microservices easier and more efficient, further accelerating the shift. So if we pick the vertical of retail, uh, because most everyone's familiar with it, the average retail site uses specific APIs for tasks such as account creation, user login, password reset, uh, product catalog, personalized recommendations, shopping cart, uh, checkout, payment, and the list goes on and on. APIs allow these microservices to communicate with each other and with the user interface of the application. This transition has caused an exponential growth in the API usage, and the days of the monolithic web application simply is over. All of that API growth, where do we start? Maybe better, will we ever catch up? This is an iterative process. Uh, while the illustration is linear, a wheel would probably be a better way to show it. The reason is APIs are being discovered and developed at an almost daily basis in many of your organizations. Discovering what your application is using is the first step to being able to secure your environment. Additionally, you need to consider what else is in your environment. Are there web servers running old code and untested APIs running on a machine under a developer's desk? What are the development test staging and production environments for the applications that you know about? Not to mention the ones that you may not be aware of. We need to create a process for ensuring that we understand what exists in our environment. Managing that inventory so it is kept up to date. To properly prioritize and be efficient in our security efforts, we need to profile the applications based on aspects like data classification, exposure, business impact of an interruption, et cetera. So then the final step to securing all those assets is understanding their relationships. It's important to note this is also often a requirement to stay compliant with some of the latest privacy regulations like GDPR, et cetera. Discovery can be tricky. It's time consuming. Manual discovery entails 
scanning the network, enumerating HTTP servers, and then inspecting those web servers to identify if they're hosting an API, which anybody who's done an API pen test without complete documentation can attest is nearly impossible. In a large environment, this could be an insurmountable task, uh, considering the number of web servers that may exist in your environment. In my experience, rarely do teams ever get the budget to properly invest in API discovery. With things often done as part of ad hoc or maybe fitted into everyday operations here and there as a team can, which just simply isn't enough. So let's break discovery down into internal and external. Let's start with external. Uh, the first step should be leveraging tools, uh, specifically with pro cloud providers. Uh, most cloud providers have tools built in that provide nearly real-time reports of APIs running in the cloud. Akamai, for example, performs discovery every 24 hours and collects really useful information about every API that it identifies, including things like host name, parameters, methods, etc. Let's transition to internal. For internal APIs, given the complexity of the environment, start by identifying key players within each development team. We'll call them security champions. More on that later. Then working with them to provide details will most likely be the most effective approach. Begin by reviewing existing documentation, uh, collect information about the current application architectures. Maintaining this relationship is going to be crucial for keeping the information accurate and up to date. Additionally, reviewing source code repositories like Git can be helpful in providing additional details not currently documented. The biggest challenge with API discovery within the firewall is having dedicated resources to keep up with the discovery and documentation while also keeping catalogs, repositories, other documentation, and, and key sources of API discovery information up to date. As I mentioned earlier, for each development team, pick a member and make them a security champion. This is a position that should be sought after and desired. That individual becomes the liaison between the security team and the development team. This can significantly improve the relationship between these teams that often have competing interests. Train developers about secure coding practices. If you don't, they'll likely continue to make the same mistakes. Invest in secure coding courses for developers with requirements that the training be completed. Track common vulnerabilities to identify concepts that need training. Development teams that struggle with remediation should be flagged for additional training on those subjects. Review how developers are handling sensitive data, such as cardholder data and PII. Developers must document how the security features of their applications are implemented. Building a complete inventory of all APIs is not only crucial for security, but it can also have an impact on cutting development costs. One of the beautiful things about using microservices is the ability to reuse them in a variety of solutions. For instance, an API that handles the payment processing functions of the retail application we spoke of earlier can be used by a variety of e-commerce portals. In this instance, the development savings is apparent, but additionally, if a complete inventory exists, we can see efficiency gains with security testing by in integrating that inventory into the compliance security testing schedule. Another benefit of having a complete inventory is being able to correlate the various development environments. Tracking these environments is important to both vulnerability tracking, but also being able to follow the API through the development lifecycle. Because the inventory is used for multiple purposes by different teams, it's important to involve all the stakeholders in the process. Development teams will update entries for their APIs and need access to identify new APIs that they utilize or develop. Security teams will need access to obtain API details for testing. 
compliance teams are going to need to be able to track the APIs that are, are in compliance with various regulations. Each of these teams have different use cases. So ensure that the solution fits their, all of their needs in order to ensure adoption. Another aspect to include in the inventory is risk profile. Risk profiles will help identify APIs that require additional testing for compliance, as well as prioritize other, other testing activities. Risk profiles should include information like data classification, but also exposure and business impact if there were an interruption. With this information, it's possible to more precisely define the scope of compliance testing. Additionally, this information should be taken into account when creating policies governing the requirements for remediation timelines of identified vulnerabilities. Who's talking to who? Where does the data go? What APIs are your application dependent on? Who depends on data from you? What happens when an API that your application relies on has a vulnerability or a deprecated method? These questions and others can be answered with dependency trees. Dependency trees provide a strategy for understanding the complex nature of today's applications. It's common practice to version pin application dependencies. And this makes sense from the standpoint of having a consistent, reliable platform. However, it has the downside of preventing you from receiving updates as that dependency makes new releases, either for security fixes, bug fixes, or general improvements. Additionally, with a growing number of privacy laws, understanding how PII moves through your application may have compliance implications. GDPR, uh, California Consumer Privacy Act, Personal Data Protection Commission all have various levels of compliance driven by how PII moves through your application. Okay, let's change gears here a little bit. We've talked a lot about the management side of understanding our application environments. Now let's discuss some strategies for securing those environments and applications. Cloud providers and API gateways often contain or support specialized WAF functionality. Many of the OWASP API top 10 items can be mitigated with these features. For instance, OWASP 2019 API 4, lack of resource and rate limiting, can be addressed using the throttling functionality that is commonly available with these tools. Implementing this protection is an important starting point in protecting the APIs in your environment. This should, however, not be considered a replacement for security testing, and an experienced attacker can bypass some of these protections. With the move to microservices and the demand to test everything before it's moved to production, there becomes an insurmountable amount of work that we cannot simply staff up to meet. Each test has an associated amount of overhead, scoping, requesting access, communicating with the point of contact, et cetera. So conducting a bunch of small tests results in a considerable amount of time lost through overhead that if we consolidated those tests into one larger test, we could see efficiencies gained. With regard to scoping, API present their own challenges. Due to the use of disparate tools and technologies, development teams sometimes use different tools across the organization, complicating communications and coordination with regards to testing those endpoints. Some teams will use Postman, others will use Swagger files, some may provide curl commands to a testing team. In order for us to perform thorough tests, we need clear documentation and sample requests so that we can understand the logic flow and how the application could potentially be misused or abused. This again is where the theme of security champions in development teams comes in. Opening the dialogue between security testing and development teams to help the security team understand data flows, complex requests, and other business decisions that were made in the development process. Once again, I'll also go back to the importance of documentation here. 
when a development team has thorough documentation of their decisions and can provide that documentation when it comes to time to perform a test, the process of scoping and executing the test is greatly reduced. Going hand in hand with the challenges associated with small granular API test scopes is the issue of test quality. When we can only test tiny pieces of the entire puzzle, it's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to understand the potential downstream vulnerabilities. What systems are consuming the API traffic? How are they using that data? Is all of the data that is being returned by an app API actually necessary for the downstream app to function? As previously mentioned, testing single pieces of larger independent systems make it tough to track the logic flows and determine if all of the responses one can elicit from an API are actually appropriate. This leads to the potential for incubated vulnerabilities, where a seemingly innocuous API call or response ends up creating a vulnerability down the line somewhere that may not be apparent in testing. For instance, if an API manages to write malicious data to a backend database, what applications are consuming that data later on? We need to be aware of how that upstream application is processing that data. Let's go over a couple examples. This is an API get request to login that includes the user's password as an unsalted MD5 hash in the URL. MD5 has been broken for a long time and can be reversed using rainbow tables, brute forcing, and other methods, especially when being unsalted. The request URL can be cached by caching proxies, web servers, and the device. This is an example of an API returning more data than is actually needed by the consuming application. The API returns complete details, including name, address, parents, classes, emails, etc. And this is the application that consumes that previous API's response. As you can see, the UI only shows a limited amount of information about the individual. We can see only a name and email address. It does not make sense for the API to return the amount of information that it did. Injection vulnerabilities come in many forms, from SQL injection to cross-site scripting to the recent log4j vulnerability. But they all essentially boil down to when untrusted user input is sent to an interpreter as part of a command or query. The untrusted input tricks the interpreter into executing a command or accessing data without proper authorization. APIs are certainly not an exception to injection vulnerabilities, nor are the third-party applications that they may interact with. Let's look at a basic example. This is your cookie cutter vanilla cross-site scripting payload. This is an API post request to save the JSON name parameter with the cross-site scripting payload. We get a 200 OK with the JSON response containing the XSS payload. Some people might think this is fine because it's just JSON. It can't directly be exploited. JSON doesn't get executed in the browser. And that's typically true. But let's look, take a look at the consuming application. Now, is this exploitable? Absolutely. But if we only tested the API endpoint without taking into account the upstream application, we may never know this to be exploitable. How can we be more efficient while also addressing those test concerns? We can start using some features of Postman to automate some basic testing. This is a perfect opportunity to move some testing from information security teams to the development teams. Using Postman Test Runner, we can script these tests. And with monitors, we can even send alerts when te a test fails, allowing us to automate these tests as part of the deployment process. Additionally, by having good documentation of the development sprints, we can use that documentation to narrow the efforts of testing when we are testing newly developed functionality. 
we can utilize the risk profiles we talked about earlier to target and prioritize testing applications that meet certain business criteria. Finally, I mentioned Postman earlier, but there are other tools that we can utilize to automate and streamline this testing as well. OWASP is certainly an excellent source of information and the OWASP API Security Top 10 from 2019 is a great example of this. Here I've identified a few examples of vulnerabilities from that list that are excellent candidates for automated testing scripts. We'll look at a very basic example of testing for broken authentication in just a moment. Rate limiting vulnerabilities can result in high costs when using cloud platforms. Additionally, when other vulnerabilities exist, Attackers will oftentimes attempt to brute force exploitation of those vulnerabilities to exfiltrate data. Slowing those attacks and throttling excessive requests can find much needed time for incident response to take action and limit that exposure. We've all seen applications that forget to enforce authentication on a component or some functionality. This often results from the development of a new feature and the developer missing a step and including the authentication or authorization framework for that feature. This can easily be tested for as part of build scripts and caught before that code is deployed to production. Security misconfiguration is a catch all of sorts, but there are certainly components here as well that can be tested for easily and accurately with automation. So let's take a look at a script for a broken authentication in Postman tests. In this case, we have removed the authorization header that the API uses and created a test that expects a 403 forbidden response. This test fails. The application returns a 200 OK, indicating that the application has failed to implement authentication on this request. This can be useful when you're testing the same API frequently like for each build or deployment. Also consider the advantages of having a collection with test cases built into it for tests that occur on a regular basis, like applications that have compliance drivers that require annual testing. If we want to take this a step further though, we can automate the test using Postman monitors. To begin the automation process, we can create a monitor in the workspace. Click on the three dots after the collection and select monitor collection. Here we can schedule monitors to run on a schedule, say, if we do schedule deployments of new code. There are also options for creating and sending notifications of any te failed test cases. Additional reporting and trending is also available within monitors. In review, Document all APIs. Understanding what is running in the environment is the first step to securing it. Prioritize the depth and testing efforts of APIs, similar to how vulnerability remediation should be prioritized. Put interactive application security tools in the hands of developers and allow them to use automated testing to streamline their processes as well. Implement and utilize software composition analysis tools to analyze software dependencies, monitor those dependencies for vulnerabilities. Build a culture of security in your development teams through partnership with them. And by creating dependency trees for applications, identify commonly used APIs in the environment and ensure that those APIs are given priority for remediation effort. Okay, well, thank you for attending. If you have any questions, I'll be on Discord to, and I'll be happy to attempt to answer anything that you may have. Um, otherwise, I'll be hanging out at the Lockpick Village, or maybe not this time. Um, but I look forward to seeing anybody uh, and all of you at any in-person conferences that you're able to attend. Uh, if you run into me, uh, please say hi, and uh, let's have a conversation. So thank you very much.